ladies and gentlemen. It's wonderful to be here with you today. My first time in Milan. I'm super excited. My name is Jan Stempien, and I um, came here to share a couple of things which I find very interesting, which worked for me very well in my professional experience, and I hope they will work for you too. A couple of words of introduction. I work um, at InnoQ. We are a software consultancy specializing in architecture, development trainings, uh, operations, and a whole number of various technologies. I also co-organize uh, Closure Munich Meetup. Uh, so if you happen to be in Munich, just swing by. We are a lovely bunch. We are meeting every first Tuesday of the month. Very open for beginners. And no worries about taking uh, pictures. Organizers promise that slides will be online. Um, there's a couple of topics which I find very interesting. Functional programming, I've been doing it for in, in production for a couple of years now, and I find the concept very, um, very productive. Uh, operations, continuous delivery, and, so, and the topics revolving around this core. Uh, generative testing, like quick check, property-based testing, and finally, software architecture. If any of those topics is something you'd like to talk about, I would love to chat with you afterwards. However, Right now, we're going to focus on those two topics, an intersection of uh, functional programming and software architecture. The reason why I'm, I think it's a topic worth discussing is that throughout our uh, meetups in Munich, we've heard a lot of questions. Okay, I've seen, a couple, I've seen basics of the language. I know like, how to solve simple problems. How do I structure something real? How do I structure a whole web application? Um, and this is an attempt at answering this question. So I'm going to talk about structure of, uh, of an application, and specifically about web, because I think web represents the right complexity, when you really have to think where to put stuff, because otherwise your code will rot in half a year and you won't be able to modify it anymore. I'll be showing a lot of code, but don't worry if it's unclear. I know that not all of us are fluent in Clojure, so no worries. It's more about not what the code actually does, but where it is and where things belong, where parts belong, how they are being cut and separated from another. Clojure has this one funny uh, feature characteristic, the fact that there are basically no frameworks. We don't have really frameworks. We have small libraries which um, we combine together to build something larger. And this is also one of the reasons why people ask, how do I build stuff? There is nothing which is going to build an entire skeleton for me. Let's try to answer by discussing one particular approach to, to um, architecture. And once again, um, or rather, and allow me to underline, this is just one recipe. This is just one idea I'd like to present. There is a couple of other uh, potential solutions to this problem. Um, some of them I find very, uh, very compelling, and I encourage you to explore them and compare with what I'm going to show today. Um, what you're going to see, you might probably know from other circles. Ports and adapters, hexagonal, anybody? Clean architecture? It's something which we've seen in the object-oriented world for quite a while now. And I find this approach very uh, compelling, and I'm going to borrow a lot of those concepts into the world of closure. It all boils down to a certain layering of parts of our architecture. In the very middle, we will have our domain objects, nouns, things which represent our business domain. Um, the next layer, will be use cases. Those will be, now, those will be verbs, sentences. What do we actually do with those uh, domain objects we have? And then finally, um, adapters, which will translate the world outside of our application into the world of our pure um, verbs and nouns. The blue area is where things like, words like um, HTTP or a database will start appearing inside. Such concepts are meaningless. There is one important rule. Dependencies can only point inwards. In other words, my nouns don't know about sentences they will appear in, and my verbs, my business use cases, don't know about things like MySQL or a web server. Those are irrelevant. And with this brief, brief introduction, let's jump headfirst into a simple use case. Booking tables. Let's uh, 
built from, from the very beginning a simple web app which has a single um, resource to which you can post a booking to get a, a table book in a restaurant. We're going to follow a standard structure of a closure project. I divided it to begin with into um, three files, which follow exactly the split you saw a second ago. We have our domain entity, a booking, a use case, that is booking a table, and an adapter, which translates this uh, internal world into HTTP. Let's start from the middle. We have our booking. In table entities booking namespace, I'm specifying what is a valid booking in my world. Um, I'm using um, a fairly new piece of um, st enclosure standard library, specifically closure spec. I'm saying that in order to be a booking, you have to be something which has keys, name, seats, and time. Name is a string, seats is an integer which is positive, and time is an instance of Java util date. And as long as you satisfy those things in your thing, your thing can be a hash map, your thing to be, can be anything which has those keys, it's a valid business object from my perspective. Example. Um, using the explain fun function coming from closure spec, I can, uh, I can learn, for example, that the first example is not a valid booking because number of seats is not positive. And then in the example below, I can learn that my booking is valid despite having more information. It has a phone number, which we didn't specify, but it doesn't matter. All the other keys match our specification. In other words, our, we can extend our domain, we can provide more information as our application grows, and old code, which relied on existing specification, does not break. The system is evolvable. We've got our first noun, something we can, we can grab and use. Let's use it, and our first use case. Let's go to the green area now and talk about booking a table. In table use cases, book table namespace, I will define a function book table, taking two arguments. Context and booking. Booking is what, you, what you've seen uh, a minute ago. And context is, is a map which I use for dependency injection. This is how I inject all the moving things, all the moving parts in our application. And then in its body, as you can see, I'm calling a safe booking function, which you haven't seen yet, extracting from my context an instance of safe booking, in other words, an implementation of something I can save a booking with, and my booking. And then below you can see save booking defined as a protocol. I say there is a general protocol for booking tables, and it's up to you to implement it against the Postgres database or in, in memory storage for your tests. That's up to you. So far, no technology involved, right? No database, there's no HTTP, just pure logic so far. Very testable as a, as a result. One more thing I can add is and at the beginning of book table function, I can say there is a precondition. Specifically, my booking has to be a valid instance of a booking. This way, if what I get into my application does not conform to the specification, I will get uh, an assertion error, some sort of feedback. I'm checking correctness of the input at the boundary of my business logic. We can use it now. Now we can have a following expression. We have a let expression in which we say there is a booking which is a following map and there is a context in which safe booking is this one of anonymous instance of safe booking where safe booking just prints the booking to the standard output and does nothing else and then i can call book table with this context and the booking and my booking will be printed saved booking to the standard output just to see how things connect together of course in future this would become something saving to a database, giving a connection. We will get there in a second. All right. We've got our domain entity. We've got our use case. Now let's talk about uh, the real world, adapting it to, to, to actually becoming something we can use on the web. Now let's talk about Ring. Ring, as some of you may know, is, is a tool translating the world of HTTP protocol into the world of our closure functions and the data structures. It's just an abstraction layer, an API. And I can now use 
and now in table adapters ring, I am defining so-called ring handlers. That is, things which respond to um, HTTP requests. And I say post booking is such a handler. It gets a context, exactly the context you've seen two minutes ago, and a request. And then it um, somehow details are um, not relevant here, extracts booking from parameters we passed in, in our HTTP request, um, books the table using those parameters, and responds with success, HTTP status code 201 created, or something. And now, of course, we can have another function like list bookings, allowing us to present all the bookings when a GET request comes, and so on. And what we can do now is connect those things together, introducing HTTP verbs and HTTP routing. I'm using a library which I, I like a lot. It's called Composure, with J in the middle. Um, Composure allows me to define so-called roots. Roots are is, is a, another ring handler, which allows me to uh, specify in this fun, funny domain specific language that I can get bookings and then list bookings will be involved, or I can post to bookings and post bookings will be involved. Right? I'm connecting things which I have just d defined a second ago. And then finally, I'm defining a handler, adding some extra um, extra um, library code which will extract parameters posted as as a form um, encoded body, translating it into my into closure data structures. Okay, we've built something. We have. Uh, a noun, we have a verb, even a whole sentence, and we have this exposed as, um, as something which is a valid web application. But it's still completely dead, right? We, haven't, we don't have anything like a server, we don't have a database. Now we're going to introduce some life into the system. System, this is a word which I've used this first time, and it matters. We're going to, yes, what's missing is, of course, life, specifically, um, system of, of living, moving pieces I'm going to inject into my so far pure logic. Let's start with the Postgres component. Here I'm defining a table system Postgres namespace in which I will use um, the component library. Component is a very small library introducing um, the concept of a life cycle, things which can be started and stopped, like a database connection. I can start it, create a connection pool, connect to this, the database, and stop it, clean up and disconnect. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm saying um, there is a Postgres record which implements component life cycle. When I start it, using some library function which I'm omitting here, I can connect to this uh, database, and then I can stop stop this connection, uh, disconnect, clean up all the resources, and dissociate um, the connection. Um, now I have a method of connecting to a database and disconnecting from the database. Now it's time to introduce uh, those SQL queries, which will actually insert the booking when I'm, uh, when I'm calling uh, this uh, save booking function you've seen. I'm doing it in the same namespace. Below, I would write, Postgres implements the save booking protocol. You probably remember it. We define this protocol uh, in, the, in the blue area. Um, Postgres implements save booking, which means that once you invoke save booking function with Postgres as the first argument, the following SQL query will be executed against our, our database. Here, the execute SQL function is, is, of course, something I made up. We would use some relevant library function for that. But as you can see here, actual operations, like what I'm doing, saving a booking, and how am I doing it, running an insert query, are completely decoupled. They are in different namespaces. They are different thing. Finally, I'm defining a helper function called Postgres, which will allow me to easily create a new instance of a Postgres connection. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing with an HTTP server. We want to define um, 
also a component which can be started and stopped. When it's started, it starts listening to HTTP requests, and when it's stopped, it closes the socket, cleans up. Um, I'm not going to use any particular web server, like, I don't know, Jetty or um, Tomcat or LF. doesn't matter now. Um, but I'm going to say, if I start it, if I start my HTTP component, I will first of all get, uh, I will, I, I mean, the, the, the HTTP component has to get the handler, the ring handler, the function with all my routing and all this HTTP stuff in my application. It has to have it injected when it's created. Then it passes context into, the, into that handler and starts the resulting server, opening, uh, opening to HTTP connections. I'm saving an instance of the server in the record for later in order to not lose a handle to it, in order to um, close it myself, close it when I'm done with it. And then I'm stopping it um, when I'm done, and again, replacing the key with nil to allow the garbage co collector to remove an object I don't need anymore. And another helper function where um, I am passing a handler and in return getting an instance of the record you see above. Again, if this is more closure than you ev ev you've ever seen and it's not clear, no worries. It's about where things belong now exactly how they roam, how they work. We've got a Postgres connection and an HTTP connection. Now we can start both of them in independently, but what we want to do is to start both of them at the same time when the application is starting. And this is what we're doing in tabled system namespace. Here I'm defining the entire system of moving things in an application, things which are alive. Um, I'm using component again and um, importing all the code from HTTP server, Postgres, and my ring adapter. And I'm defining a so-called system map, which is created by this function called system. It takes configuration as an argument, configuration being anything you need in order to connect to your database, like you know, host name, password, username, and so on. I'm passing it inside, and then um, using component system map function, I'm creating another thing which has a life cycle, and when it's being started, it starts all its sub-components step by step, allowing me to inject one into another. Let's take a look. First of all, Postgres. Using configuration, it starts Postgres connection. Then, context. We have this interesting thing called component using. What it means is that um, the Postgres, um, the Postgres instance will be injected into the context under the save booking key you see in that map. That is, Postgres, living the, the connected Postgres connection will be available in my context under the save booking key. This way, if I have more use cases, more protocols, I can reuse my Postgres connection in a whole lot of different use cases, injecting them over there. This way I don't need to create multiple instances and multiple thread pools to use the same Postgres connection. And then at the bottom, I'm, when, I'm, um, when I have an instance of context ready, I am passing my ring handler into my HTTP server and injecting the context into it, allowing the um, ring handler to use the initialized context of the database connection for all the purposes, uh, f for all its needs. That's what we've got so far. We've got a representation of our business object. We've got a use case of this business object, some uh, adapter translating it into the world of ring, um, and then a system of moving things, because everything above was purely functional, immutable, something which I can also test very easily. I like to underline it. And then below, we have dependency injection going on. How do I introduce life, moving pieces into the, into the, uh, um, into the application? And I'm connecting all those pieces very explicitly. All the code you've seen uh, does it explicitly, without any like, magic of a framework putting things where I need them. 
I'm explicitly saying I will need this there. I like it. I like this explicitness, explicitness because it allows me to reason about my code. If, for example, now my application grows and I need another um, another way to connect with the world, not only through HTTP, but for example, Apache Kafka or something, or Elasticsearch, um, I can keep adding new components, which create connections to those uh, to those new data sources. If I need to adapt messages coming through adapt uh, through uh, from Apache Kafka into my business into operations in my uh, business logic I will create another adapter which will translate that world into my pure world if I need to test it I will create another system which will not be Postgres and will not open TCP connections but it will simulate those things in memory allowing me to run my, my tests very quickly because they will not touch the database. Of course, at some point I want to test my SQL statements, but that's another story. Here, naturally, you need to have some sort of end-to-end -end test. Things you see above, thanks to them being um, purely functional and decoupled from everything er else, you can test them en masse. You can introduce property-based testing and make sure that, for example, certain um, operations executed with random data will always result in either valid state of the system or an error message which you expect, which, the, which, which is specified by your uh, domain experts, allowing you to also work with your domain experts very close, closely. Many things are missing. I haven't said a word about HTML about views, about assets, about JavaScript, CSS, those are important things. And they belong somewhere here, probably in another, I would put them in another um, directory, like views or something, another one with static assets. But this goes beyond the scope. So far, all we wanted is this single endpoint allowing us to book tables in the restroom. And we've got this. The only thing which is left is starting it all together. And that's why I will introduce a main name at the very bottom, which will allow me to start the whole thing from the command line. In the table main namespace, I will have, again, components coming in, and my entire system, the system map you've seen before. And I will define this minus main function. It looks funny, but what it stands for is it's if we compile table main namespace to be a Java class, this will be its main method allowing me to start the whole thing straight from the command, straight from the uh, command line. So what I'm doing in main is I'm simulating, I'm getting configuration from somewhere. You'd get it from a from environment, from a file, from maybe Zookeeper. I'm just hard coding it. And then I'm passing my configuration into my system function you saw um, not long ago, and using component start, starting the whole thing off. What happens as a result? The configuration is passed to Postgres. Postgres is connecting. After it's ready, it's being put into context under the safe booking key. The context is being passed to the handler. The handler is being started, opening TCP connection. The whole thing waits for our clients to come and book tables. The resulting clean clear cut into all those layers helps me a lot when I need to grow this application, when I need to extend it, when new requirements come, when the business is expanding its activity. When I get, when, when my domain gets richer, I have more information about my booking because suddenly we need phone numbers of people who are booking tables. I know where to look. I will go to the red zone and introduce more uh, more information there. If I need, um, if I need another use case, another thing we can do, like cancel booking, that's another use case, which probably implies we also need to um, expose it somehow by adapting our newly defined use case to the 
to the real world of HTTP, translating it um, from, an, from some kind of delete HTTP request into, into a call to the function. This will probably also mean I need to um, introduce a new SQL query. Otherwise, I will uh, get a, an error like Postgres connection does not implement delete booking uh, protocol. And that's true. I have to go to my Postgres namespace and say, Postgres also implements delete booking with the following SQL query. Notice that I keep using direct, directly SQL queries. I'm not re um, resolving to any kind of uh, object uh, relational mapper. I like operating directly with this domain specific language, which is excellent for what it was designed, operating on data. And finally, HTTP server is, is most likely a namespace which I will never have to look into again, unless my existing HTTP server is too slow, my business uh, goes up and I, I have to use more efficient HTTP server. But I think this is uh, something also out of scope. To sum up and to show you a couple of libraries which, I've, um, which, I, which we, we have used here, um, we have used closure spec for our contracts, for saying what is a valid instance of my, of my booking, of my noun. Um, we looked at composure and ring core, two things which allowed me to um, translate this blob of bytes of HTTP protocol into closure data structures I can work with. We used components, and we haven't used system. I will tell you in a second. We used component to introduce lifecycle into our application. And system is a library which is very difficult to search for on the internet. <laughs> but if you find it on GitHub, you have to, you have to search for like closure component system. And you then you, you get to this library. It is a ready collection of a whole lot of components which you might find useful in your day-to-day -day job, such as component for MySQL, for Postgres, for Elasticsearch, for this web server, for that web server. All of those things out of the box. In other words, I most likely wouldn't have to even look at my Postgres component at my HTTP server. I would just take them directly from the system library. But I wanted to show, just to be explicit with you, how it would look like, how it looks like under the box, uh, under the hood. And then finally, I lied at the beginning. There are frameworks. There are frameworks, um, but that's that's not, so to speak, the idiomatic way to start uh, building a closure application. Typically, you choose those small bits, small pieces, and combine them together. But if you'd like to take a look at another way, another way to structure applications, I encourage you to take a look at um, Luminous, which is used heavily, I think, in healthcare in Toronto, but that's another story. Uh, and Duct, another um, framework, which combine all the pieces a bit differently. And I encourage you to, to contrast them with what, you, what you've seen today and deciding on your own what feels more natural to you and what might be more maintainable in the long run. With this being said, I think this is um, all I have. We went through all those small steps, small pieces of combining all, the, um, all, the, all those libraries, structuring a clearly cut, clearly separated stack of, um, of modules, of namespaces, expo exposing ready business functionality, which is testable, evolvable, maintainable. We know where things belong. And um, to the best of my knowledge, follows best practices, not only in the closure world, but also Best practices we see in the um, in the work of our object-oriented friends, right? It's exactly same layered structures, following a hexagonal architecture, for instance. Um, if there are any, uh, if you have any doubts, any anything which you'd like to, uh, or any holes in my reasoning, I would love to hear about it. I would like to hear from you. I'm open for your questions, for your comments, and I'm also hanging out till. Um, till the end of the conference so it's easy to grab me either here live or you see my coordinates on the slide. That's all I've got. You've been a wonderful audience. Thank you all very much.